channel Welcome back to this beautiful and informative episode of the Silsila Discourses of Attar. As always, we try to encourage ourselves, each other, to try and make as many good intentions as possible. So at the outset, at the beginning of this Silsila, please make as many good intentions as you can, that I will listen to the Silsila for the pleasure of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. I will note down the important points, I will try to practice upon them, encourage them, to my family members, my spouse, my children, even my society. In this manner, whichever other good intentions you can make, please try to make them to gain maximum thawab and rewards. Indeed, there are countless benefits in, in reciting durood, salat ala nabi and salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu It is mentioned in the summary of a beautiful hadith that the beloved nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has mentioned. That person who recites Durood, Salat, or oh, salutations upon me 1,000 times daily. He will not die until he sees his place in Jannah. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, Continuing from the last episode regarding incidences of the graveyard, of the grave and the dwellers of the grave, and what can benefit them? When wanting to visit the blessed tomb of a pious saint of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, or the grave of any Muslim, then it is mustahab, it is recommended to perform two rakat of nafil salah, optional salah, as long as the time is not a makruh time. Recite these two rakat in your home. In each rakat, Recite Ayatul Kursi one time and Surah Ikhlas Allahu Ahad three times after Surah Fatiha and donate the reward of this Salah to the deceased whose grave you are going to visit. Allah Azza wa Jal will create brilliance in the grave of that deceased person and He will bestow an extremely great reward on the one who donated this reward, subhanallah. Our beloved master, the intercessor of the ummah, the holy prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa has stated, whoever enters a graveyard and recites surah fatiha, surah ikhlas, ulhu allahu ahad, and surah takathur, al-haakumut takathur, and then makes the following dua, O Allah azza wa jal, Whatever I have recited from the Holy Qur'an, grant the reward of it to all the Muslim men and women buried in this graveyard. Then all of them will intercede for him on the Day of Judgment. SubhanAllah. It is mentioned in a beautiful hadith that whoever recites Surah Ikhlas 11 times and conveys and passes the rewards of its virtues to the deceased, to the dead people, the dead Muslims, he will be rewarded in accordance with the number of the deceased. Esau al-Thawab can also be done in the following way. Go to the graveyard, recite Surah Fatiha from Alif Lam Mim to Muflihun of Surah Baqarah. Recite Ayatul Kursi, the Ayah, Aman al to the end of the surah. Recite Surah Yasin, Surah Mulk, Surah Takathur once each, and Surah Ikhlas, the complete surah, 
12, 11, 7 or 3 times. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The leader of the awliya Allah, the king of the awliya Allah, our Hothi Paak, Hothi Azm, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, alayhi rahmatullahi, alayhi rahmatullahi al-Hadi, was a humbly, meaning that he was a follower, a muqallid of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu a follower of the Hanbali school of fiqh Hothi Azum radiyallahu ta'ala anhu would often visit the graveyards and in particular the blessed tombs, the mazarat of the pious saints of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal in this regard Shaykh Ali bin Haytami Alihi Rahmatullah al Qawi has stated Once I visited the enlightened tomb of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu whilst in a sacred company of Huthi Azam Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Quddisa Sirruhun Nurani and Shaykh Baqa bin Batu Rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali where I saw that Sayyiduna Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu came out from his blessed grave. He hugged Hothi Paak Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Quddisa Sirruhun Nurani, granted him the attire of honor and said, O oh Abdul Qadir, all people will be dependent on you for the knowledge of Sharia, the Islamic sacred law and tariqah. Islamic spirituality. Then I went with Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the blessed tomb of Sayyidina Shaykh Ma'roof Karhi rahmatullahi ta'ala ali where Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani Quddisa Sirruh Nurani said O Shaykh Ma'roof peace be upon you we have gone beyond you by two levels Sayyidina Shaykh Ma'roof Karhi Rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali then replied from the grave Wa alayka as-salamu ya sayyida ahli zamanihi meaning and peace be upon you O leader of the people of your times may the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal be upon them and may we be forgiven without accountability for their sake Ameen Bijahin Nabi Al-Ameen Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madini channel, from this we learn that even after the passing from this world, the pious saints, rahimahumullah ta'ala, are indeed alive in their blessed tombs. As Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, came out from his enlightened grave to embrace Huthi Paak, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Quddisa Sirruh Nurani. And similarly, Sayyiduna Shaykh Ma'roof Karhi Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali had replied to his greeting from his radiant tomb in such a way that it was heard from outside. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam. Abu Nadr Nishapuri Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali who was a pious grave digger he has narrated, Once I dug a grave, but a path to the adjacent grave was formed in a wrong manner. I saw a handsome young man who was clothed in fine clothing and fragrant with exquisite perfume, sitting cross-legged, cross-legged, reciting the Holy Quran. When he saw me, the young man said, has the day of judgment come? I replied, No. To which he then said, Put the soil which you moved back in its place. So I moved the soil back. May the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal be upon him and may we be forgiven without accountability for his sake. Ameen bijahin Nabi al Ameen. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal preserves the bodies of his prophets, the Anbiya alayhim of his pious saints, rahimahumullah ta'ala. 
and distinguished people even in the grave and bestows countless benefits and bounties upon them. These honorable individuals gain the pleasure of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal even in their blessed tombs. Allah Azza wa Jal causes their blessed tombs to become beautifully fragrant and sometimes makes this apparent to the common people for their encouragement. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Imam Ibn Abi Dunya rahmatullahi ta'ala ali has narrated from Sayyidina Mughira bin Habib rahmatullahi ta'ala ali that a fragrance would emanate from a particular grave. Someone dreamt that the one buried in that grave had asked, what is this fragrance? The reply was given, this is the fragrance of reciting the Holy Quran and fasting. The Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, from this we learn that there are unlimited blessings in the recitation of the Holy Quran, in fasting and other ibadat, other acts of worship and that Almighty Allah Azza wa causes the graves of His obedient and pious servants to become fragrant from His infinite rahmah and mercy. Once a waliullah, a saint of Allah Azza wa Jal, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, stated, one of my neighbors used to utter heretical statements. After his death, I saw him in a dream, and I saw that he had a deformed eye. I asked him, what happened? And he replied, I used to abuse the blessed Sahaba, and now Allah has made me abused. Having said, he covered his defective eye with his hand. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, from this narration we learn that it is extremely dangerous in fact to pick faults in the blessed companions, to pick faults in the blessed Sahaba alayhim ridwan. Leave aside saying such things with the tongue, when one should not even think any bad regarding these blessed personalities in the heart. On page 252 of the 1250 page, 50 page book published by Dawud Islamist Publishing Department, Maktabut al Madina, entitled Bahari Shariat, Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali A'adhami Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali has stated, All the blessed companions, the Sahabi Kiram Ali Himuridwan, are people of goodness and taqwa and piety. And they are completely just. It is absolutely necessary, fard and compulsory to speak good of them whenever they are mentioned. He Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali has further stated on page 254, all the blessed companions, the Sahaba Kiram Ali Muridwan, the highest in status and the lowest, and there is really none low in status amongst them, are destined for Jannah, for paradise. Let alone entering the hellfire, they will not even hear the sound of the hellfire and they will remain according to their own wishes and desires forever. The immense calamity of the Day of Judgment will not cause them any grief and on that day, the Malaika, the angels will welcome them saying that this is the day that you were promised. This subject is mentioned in the Holy Quran in fact. The devotee of the blessed companions and the blessed household of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the Ahlul Bayt, His Eminence Al-Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi has stated that the Ahl Sunnah will attain their destination with the companions as stars and the blessed household as the means of transportation, subhanallah. Shaiban bin Hassan has stated, my father and Abdul Wahid bin Zaid went to participate in an Islamic battle. Now, on the way, they saw a mysterious well from which they could hear some noises. They peeped inside and they saw a person 
who was sitting on a chair and water was flowing beneath him. They asked this person, Are you a human being or a jinn? He replied, I am a human. They asked him, Where are you from? He replied, I am from Antakya. He then said, My story is that I have passed away and now I have been imprisoned in this well because of some unpaid debts. Although some people of Antakya, they speak well of me, but nobody has paid off my debts. Then those two people, they went to Antakya and after collecting the necessary information, they paid off the debt of that man who was imprisoned in that mysterious well. And then they returned to this place where the well was. Now, neither was that man there, nor was the well there itself. When they slept at that place where the well was, they saw a dream in which that same individual came to them. And he said, Jazakum Allahu anni khayran. May Allah Azza wa give you both an abundant return from me. After paying my debts, Allah Azza wa has placed me in Jannah. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, from this we learn that debt is indeed a heavy burden to bear. Those who delay especially in paying off their debts should take heed from this narration. And instead of refusing their creditor, they themselves should go to him to repay the debt and express their gratitude to them. It is possible that in delaying the repayment until tomorrow, the debt moat may arrive and send you to your grave. The beloved Rasul has stated, I swear by the one in whose sole control is my soul, if a person is killed in the path of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal and then given life again, and he is then killed in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal and then given life again, and he has the burden of death over his head, he will not enter paradise until his debt is paid. If a Muslim passes away in the state that he is in debt, then those close to him should immediately pay back that debt so that they can be eased in the grave of that deceased person. The most beloved Rasul وسلم, has stated, without doubt, your companion has been stopped at the door of Jannah because of his debts. If you want, you can pay all his debt and if you want, you can relinquish him, that is, the deceased borrower to the torment. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, have we seen how great this burden is to have debts on our heads? Therefore, as quick as possible, try to repay those debts. Sayyiduna Abu Ali rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali has stated, I placed the body of a pious servant of Allah into the grave. When I untied the shroud and I placed his head on the earth so that Allah would have mercy on his state, the pious man opened his eyes. This deceased pious man opened his eyes and he said to me, O oh Abu Ali, you are humiliating me in front of the one that is Allah who bestows special grace upon me. I then said, O oh my master, is there life after death? He replied, I am alive and every individual who is beloved to Allah is alive. By virtue of the power and honor that I will be granted, certainly on the day of judgment, I will help you. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, from this we learn that the blessed martyrs, the shuhada, and the friends of Allah Azza wa Jal, the only Allah, indeed are alive in their graves and they are aware of everything. Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali has stated, Allama Ali Qari, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, has written in the commentary of Mishkat Sharif that, in principle, 
there is no difference in the two states in principle that is in the life and in death of the friends of Allah Azza for this reason it is said that they do not die but they are merely moved from one place to another subhanallah may Allah Azza wa grant us this true understanding of his beautiful deen of Islam may Allah Azza wa grant us the enthusiasm to make tayyari and preparation for our qabr sooner or later we will die we do not know the condition we must make dua that we will die in a good state ameen bijahin nabiyil ameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attar is my guide attar is my guide by the grace of allah attar is my guide my murshid is changed millions of lives the prophetic sunnah he is revived the leader of the sunnis he is our pride by the grace of allah attar is my guide